Hey there chemists, welcome to another exciting day of chemistry. Today we're going to be looking at um, what is called enthalpy and it falls within our thermochemistry unit or the unit studying heat transfer. Uh, before I go ahead and jump in today though, I do want to say that it will be very helpful and handy for today's lesson and tomorrow's Pear Deck to have reference table I handy. So whether that's a virtual copy or your paper copy, either is fine. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a video called Methane Mamba, and uh, we will uh, start our discussion right after this. I mean, if you say fire bubbles, uh, that's a dichotomy, yeah. but they just go, ah, bubbles catch on fire. They don't catch on fire. And no. So I have a setup bubbles, to, be able to show bubbles, you. Bubbles, Look into the camera so we don't have the emails that say, don't try this at home. Don't try, try this. this. No, don't do any of that. All right. <laughs> so here's the setup. I have a beach ball, and I have a tube in the beach ball, and mm -hmm. I've just blown into the, into the ball just a little bit so and i have a container here that has some soapy water okay. so put your hands down and get them kind of soapy My good hands. okay now put your hands out right. and now just hold this now hold this down in here oh, hold, hold this the, yeah and so now i'm going to squeeze see how we're making oh, some we're bubbles. Making bubbles all right all right so scoop up some of the bubbles on your hand okay. got it all right. all right and now i'm going to light them on fire ready oh, is, here we go uh, nothing oh. bubbles don't catch on fire at least did no, no. See, the bubbles, see, now, i wouldn't worry about it. see normal bubbles don't catch on fire normal bubbles but i didn't ask you to put on your safety glasses for normal bubbles these are these are going to be Okay. Non-normal uh, bubbles, all right? Okay. So what we want to do is to be able to show the protection of your um, of your hands. Your hands are going to be protected because of the water. Oh. So here's what I'm going to do. I happen to have some methane over here. Well, of course. So, yes, yeah, so why wouldn't you have some methane? So this is methane oh. over here. And we all know that methane is, well, a little flammable. Yeah, well, just a oh, little, big right? beach ball so, now. So here is the methane, and here is my container, and I'm going to put some soap down in the container like this. So that'll be perfect. Got it? Got it. So now here's what we're going to do is we're going to uh, push the methane down inside here so we just get methane bubbles, uh, all right? Okay. So here, I'm just going to squeeze. Okay. Oh, is that great? No, those are Excellent so, Mark, bubbles. what I'm going to ask you to do is this: get your hands wet, make okay. sure they're wet, because right. we're going to breathe. Or we're going to allow the methane bubbles to start to rise. Okay. Right. That kind of fun? No, no, not yet. It's not big enough. Okay. All right, so there you go. And now that's a pretty good shot. So just kind of hold those. All right. So that's methane right there. Yeah, methane and so now your hands feel a little bit. Today they're oh. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into our notes. So I want to first start by just talking about the video and what we kind of saw from this video. So. First and foremost, um, please do not, like I said in the video, try this at home. Um, this is something that I haven't even tried in person yet, though maybe next year I will try this. Okay, so what we should notice is that what we call regular bubbles, okay, and the regular bubbles that were created were the CO2 bubbles, aka uh, Mr. Spangler, Steve Spangler uh, blew into the beach ball or blew the beach ball up using his own um, carbon dioxide coming from his lungs. So these CO2 bubbles were not flammable. Okay, um, but when Mr. Spangler used the uh, methane bubbles, or I, I don't know why there's quotes around this, they are methane bubbles, or when he did use the uh, methane gas, the CH4 gas, the bubbles were flammable. Now, the point that I want to get at here is not just that CO2 is not flammable and methane is flammable, which is true, but what I'm more interested in is once we have these methane bubbles, was this process endo or exothermic? And so since there is heat energy being given off, our process is exothermic. And I wanted to point out that, um, well, this is exothermic, there is no great way for us to measure the amount of heat energy just using a calorimeter, okay? So we can't use the calorimeter, okay? And if we think about why, there's quite a few reasons. First and foremost, right, the styrofoam, like we talked about using a styrofoam cup, flames and styrofoam don't go so well together, okay, as well as, um, our basis of our calorimeter is water. So if I try to put flames into water or water onto flames, what's gonna happen? It's just going to fizzle out. So we can't use the calorimeter to measure the amount of energy being given off by those methane bubbles. So how do we determine our Q value? How do we determine the amount of energy being released without using the calorimeter? So I want to start off with just the reaction that we saw here, which is going to be the combustion of methane. As a reminder, combustion reactions are going to be reactions in which oxygen is consumed and water and carbon dioxide are produced. So we have methane, CH4, and it's reacting with oxygen gas 
and it's going to produce water as well as carbon dioxide, okay? So from there, we do need to balance our equation. Now that we know that that's a thing, I'm not gonna leave that out. So we have one carbon, one carbon. We have two hydrogens and four. So we needed two here to balance that out. And now we have four oxygens on our product side and only two on our reactants. So a two here to balance this out. So here's our combustion reaction, okay? And what I wanna go ahead and do is just quickly review the Lewis structures or take a look at the Lewis structures for these. Remember Lewis structures are gonna be those, uh, the structures involving the lines for covalent substances or the brackets for ionic. CH4, carbon bonds four times, hydrogen bonds once each. So we have our methane structure that looks like this. Oxygen needs a total of two bonds and it starts with two lone pairs on each oxygen. We have our water, oxygen bonds twice, and therefore hydrogen bonds once, so our structure looks like this. And we have our carbon dioxide. Again, carbon is our central atom, it needs four bonds. Each oxygen needs two bonds, and we end up with our structure that looks like this. So before we talk about, um, talk about our Q value, I want to just quickly review the concept of making and breaking bonds. So whenever we talk about a substance having a positive Q or a negative Q, whether it's going to be endothermic or exothermic, what we're really looking at is whether or not the energy that it takes to make and break bonds ends up being positive or negative. So in order for the reactants to become the product, Okay, in order for the reactants to become the products, so in order for methane to magically become carbon dioxide, what has to happen first? Well, first, carbon has to break its bonds with the hydrogen, okay? Similarly, the oxygen molecule has to separate into its two separate oxygens in order to create the water and the carbon dioxide. So these bonds must break. Okay, so before we can form our products, our bonds have to break. Okay, what happens to the energy when bonds are broken? And this one's always a little tricky because students in biology always come out saying there's stored energy in bonds. And when you go into an AP level class, you'll learn a little bit more about that bond energy. But for the purpose of regents level chemistry, for the purpose of this class, we need to understand that in order to break this pen, which can be representative of a bond, in order to break this pen, this pen must absorb energy from me, right? I am putting energy into breaking this pen. So breaking bonds requires energy, okay? So breaking bonds is an absorption of energy. Okay, then when we go to form our products, okay, so now our free H's are gonna bond with our O, our free O's are gonna bond with our C. This is where we form bonds, okay? So bonds are formed. And in that formation of bonds, energy is released. So I always say this, but chemists are lazy, lazy, which we are, some of us, but, we like things to be at the lowest energy level possible. So when we are forming those bonds, what we're actually doing is releasing energy. We're forming stable compounds and releasing energy. So when bonds form, there is a release of energy. And so now you're probably looking at this and thinking, okay, well, bonds are breaking and you're absorbing energy and bonds are forming and you're releasing energy. So aren't you both endo and exothermic if you're absorbing and releasing? And the answer is kind of, except one of those two is going to have greater amounts of energy. And so if the reaction requires both absorption and release, how do we determine if our Q value is positive or negative? And so what we need to look at for this is our overall net or total energy. 
So we're going to be looking at the total of the absorption and release to determine our overall energy. And this is called enthalpy, okay? So enthalpy is going to be the quantity of overall heat or energy, okay, associated with a process. Okay. And in order to, you know, we've talked about representing like all of these different things with units. Our unit for enthalpy is delta H. So remember that delta means change in and H, capital H is representative of enthalpy. So in order to determine whether or not our overall enthalpy is positive or negative, aka endothermic or exothermic, we do need to use an equation here. Now we've talked about that term delta for delta T before, a change in temperature. So for delta H, it's gonna be very similar. Okay, so delta H is equal to H final minus H initial, or we can think of it as H of our products, the energy of our products minus the energy of our reactants or the enthalpy of our products minus reactants. Now, this is gonna come in handy later in this unit when we're talking about graphs and how to read graphs to determine delta H. But lucky for us, we don't need to do this on um, for every single reaction because we're provided with a reference table that's going to help us with these delta H values. So. We are lucky we have reference table I, which is called heat of formation, okay? So we're gonna be using reference table I for, today, for today's lesson and for tomorrow in class, just to take a look at some of these enthalpy values. So I have a reference table pulled up here and we're gonna scroll or head to reference table I. And you'll notice that it is called here heats of reaction. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna look for the heat of reaction for the combustion of methane, the reaction that we just saw. And lucky for us, again, if you look very carefully at this, it's actually our very first reaction that's provided. Here is our combustion of methane reaction. So it lists the chemical reaction and it lists our delta H value in kilojoules. So popping back to our notes here, using reference table I, look up for the value of the combustion of methane and write it in the box. So popping back to table I, it is negative 890.4 kilojoules. So negative 890.4 okay, kilojoules of energy. Now, looking at this, is this value endo or exothermic? And kind of how do we know if that's the case? Okay, this is going to be an overall exothermic reaction at the end. Okay, and we know this because of our negative uh, delta H, right? So delta H is negative. And this tracks with our understanding. We watched the video, we saw the flames, right? Heat energy is being given off. It should be overall exothermic. Now, in terms of delta H, what does that really mean for us? If delta H is negative, is our final or our product greater or less than our reactants? Okay, think about that. If our delta H is coming out negative, which value is greater, the H of our products or the H of our reactants? So let's start with exothermic because that's what we're talking about with this reactor H value going to be greater than or less than. Which one is greater, the products or the reactants? So the H of our products has to be less than the H of our reactants, right? In order for us to uh, get that negative value, we have to be subtracting 
a greater amount than what our products are, than our starting amount. For endothermic reactions, that's gonna be the opposite. The H of our products is greater than the H of our reactants. So again, this makes a lot of sense. This means that we've absorbed energy and we're ending with more energy that we started with. And this means that we have released energy and we are ending with less energy than we've started with. So sometimes it just helps to sit and uh, sit back and really think about that logically. Now, table uh, I is going to be used for a couple of things. Let's say instead of talking about that forward reaction, the combustion of methane, what if I was talking about the formation of methane? So what do I mean by that? That means what if I'm talking about the opposite reaction? So the opposite reaction being that I have H2O plus CO2 becomes uh, 2O2 plus CH4. Now, if I were to pop over to table I and scroll through the entirety of this table, there is no reaction listed that has this process. There is no formation of methane. And so how can I use table I to determine the delta H value? And looking at our delta H value or looking at this reaction, all we have to do is flip our sign. So we know that the process of combustion of methane is negative 890 kilojoules, but that means that our delta H for this case would be opposite in sign, positive um, 890.4 or kilojoules. It's just the opposite process. It's like us mathematically doing the opposite subtraction problem, okay? All right, what if I am given an amount of methane that is not one? In our balanced reaction of methane, or if we're even looking at reference table uh, I, this tells us that this is for every one mole of methane. But what if I don't have one mole? What if I have half of a mole? How do you think that impacts my delta H value? So taking a look here, okay, if I have 0.5 moles of methane instead of one mole, how do we determine the delta H? Well, okay, we have half the reactants and therefore half the energy, okay? You could also use the concept of dimensional analysis to figure this out. 0 0.5 moles of methane. We know that for every one mole of methane, that that produces negative 890.4 kilojoules. Therefore, 0.5 giving us half is going to be negative 445.2 kilojoules. So the big thing with reference table I is being able to manipulate your equations to determine based on amount or whether or not it's the reverse reaction that's happening. Last thing I want to touch base here with uh, touch base with is thermochemical equations. Okay, I labeled them as just chemical equations, but these are really thermochemical equations. And the reason they're considered thermochemical is in the equation we have heat listed as a reactant or a product. So just looking at these equations, how can I determine if the reaction is endo or exothermic? So in the first reaction here, we have heat as a product, meaning heat is being given off. So this is going to be exothermic, okay? And our evidence is heat is produced, okay? And our last reaction is going to be endothermic. In order for the reaction to occur, heat must be absorbed. So heat is absorbed. All right, everybody, thank you guys for being patient with me in this video. I will see you guys in class tomorrow and have a great rest of your day.